fail to choose, the world will perish. We've been given the chance to decide the fate of everyone. Time's running out on the world. I'm scared. There is nothing more flawed and perfect in this world than our family. Please make a choice. Always together. Always together. I will ask for the last time. Will you make a choice? Well, first of all, what was it that attracted you to this story when you first read the script and made you want to get involved? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I was always obsessed with the apocalypse when I was younger. Mm -hmm. um, I think because, I think when I was about 10, 9 or 10, Deep Impact, the film Deep Impact had happened, yes. Armageddon had happened. Yes. I grew up in quite a religious household, so there was like the idea of the second coming maybe. I remember reading the book of Revelation in a bath, trying to interpret it, because I was like, is mm -hmm. the world going to end? Can I find out about it? The Nostradamus prophecies I was a bit obsessed with. And yeah, so I, and I just, um, I think this film, What Night's Trying to Do, is tap into kind of our worst collective societal fears. Uh, and I think the world is at an interesting place, both with kind of the climate crisis and uh, politically, and the idea that the truth is quite a hard thing to access now. And I think he's, he's, really, playing, he's really playing into our fears there, but of course like wraps it up in this amazingly entertaining kind mm. of like horror thriller package, um, which is what he, that he is an expert at so yeah I was just really I was really excited to I read the script and had never been so shocked and daunted and thought oh my goodness I'm, there's, this is going to involve so much acting <laughs> um, <laughs> well, are we going to pull this off and I felt like it was going to be like jumping on a runaway train and it was it was mm. it was a, it was a, it was kind of an insane and super intense film to make yeah, because there's not many people, so there's nowhere to hide. There's nowhere, nowhere to, to hide. hide. Yeah, and you're just... Uh, we were saying yesterday to Nikki, Mika Birdie's in it, like, it was... I've never be acted in something where you have so much eye contact with mm. the uh, characters that you're opposite, because uh, I guess I've done, like, more naturalistic stuff and you're kind of looking around, and this was just really a really eyeball -y conversation, really kind of intense, and the stakes were always... You know, we shot it in chronological order. There, there's probably about two scenes that uh, have any levity to them. The rest mm -hmm. of it is just like the highest stakes you could imagine. It's the end of the world stakes. So, yeah, intense. Yeah. It was intense. Yeah. And how was it working with Knight? Because I understand he's got quite a different way of filming where mm. it's very sort of... Um, Precise. Regimented, yeah, yes. yeah. How was yeah, that? he has got a really precise process, and that was really fascinating and interesting to be a part of. He, he um, obviously has a hand in writing the film, and then he's seen. I, th I believe he kind of goes through the script and he he envisions it himself and sees how he wants to shoot it, and then he transposes that into a storyboard. And when you're working with him, what he's doing is executing that storyboard. So as an actor, you're slotting into his vision. You're kind of like part of. Not you're part of the scenery, but you're an element of of like bringing his vision to life. And really, what he's most interested in is the audience. He's just he's making it for the audience, the audience to watch it. So he wants them to be thrilled. He wants them to feel fear. He wants them to be excited. He wants them to feel the love that the characters feel for each other. He wants you to have like the best time at the movie theatre and he'll often talk about yeah, at this point I want the audience to feel this. He kind of references that more than he might talk about an interaction between the characters necessarily so it's really it's a it's a really interesting process and he just loves it he loves it like he he sits there at the monitor watching a scene and he is feeling it in his body he twitches mm. like he watches the scene and he's like he's kind of like acting along with you in a way mm. um but yeah it was it was a cool process to kind of get into it's like nothing i've ever done before yeah and obviously this is a very like stressful thriller but at the core is like this beautiful family relationship how did you and jonathan groff sort of establish that chemistry and that there's there's a lot of backstory there as well what what kind of conversations it's, did you have it's really hard because he's really horrible um <laughs> <laughs> we were just really lucky in that we we got on we became we were fast friends really mm -hmm. uh and he's just he is like the kindest person ever he's really fun he loves acting, but in a really straightforward way. It's really easy. It comes really easy for him. And we had this two-week rehearsal process with 
with Kristen as well, all of us, but um, me, him and Kristen, we just spent a lot of time together. We went ice skating, we played Just Dance on the PlayStation. Um, and I think the three of us just became this little family. And I think there's something about, when, it, when you're around a child, you're a bit more like childlike yourself, I think. And we all just got to know each other really, really quickly. And um, yeah, it was great. It was, uh, we kind of were learning how to act again. It was her first ever film and we were kind of like, learning how to act as she was learning how to act, or relearning, because mm -hmm. Knight was coaching her and we'd be like, oh yeah, maybe we should be thinking about that or doing that. Um, but she's she's fantastic and she's incredible in the film. She's stealing all the scenes from me, which is quite annoying, but yeah. <laughs> you got to support up and coming talent. That's true, that's true, you got to be generous. <laughs>